Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. This is a one-shot scenario entitled Beyond the Door. It was written by Matt Ryan and Noah Lloyd, and it's from their online collection of one-page scenarios. A link to their site, Reckoning of the Dead, can be found in the description below. I will be GMing this episode. I should note that this is the second time we've run this scenario, so let's consider this version two. So without further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. The tiny little town of Gravesport sits on the northern side of Cape Flattery in Callum County in the northwest corner of Washington State. The date is October 12th, 1921. Gravesport is a fishing village with a population of only 130 people. Their main commodity is smelt, salmon, and occasionally albacore tuna. Some of the, com uh, some of the larger industrial fisheries have their eyes on Gravesport, but for now, it remains a remote location. Indeed, there is only one road that leads out of town, and it gets washed away during the rainy season. By far the most common way to get there is via boat. There isn't much in this small town, but everyone knows everyone, and they tend to look out for one another. The weather can be incredibly harsh and foggy. Most of the year, the town is shrouded in cool, wet fog that hangs in the air, often past noon. Today is one of those foggy days. Near the center of town is a tackle shop aptly named The Bass Hole owned and operated by Margaret Bentley, wife of Dirk Bentley, a local fisherman. She has one employee, Bobby, McGee, Bobby McKenzie, who has worked for Margaret since he was 16. He's a good kid. Across the street is a small pub where the locals hang out. Yes, it's prohibition, but nobody in Gravesport, including the sheriff, gives a shit about that. As we begin our tale, Bobby McKenzie is stacking boxes behind the counter in the bass hole, he has noticed this morning that Margaret doesn't seem to have it all together. She seems distracted. Did she have a fight with Dirk? Is, is something missing from the inventory? Something is definitely eating at her this morning. Well, I'll uh, finish... Uh putting away whatever uh, boxes we've uh, I've got out on the floor and I'll uh, head over to Mark. Hey, um, Margaret, I, is everything all right today? Um, so, uh, Margaret, I, I'm basically staring out of the, uh, the window. It's, it's a slow, slow start of the day and it seems like I have a, a bit on my mind. Um, so I don't answer Bobby right away. And I actually wait until he, I guess, prompts me again. So I'm, I'm just staring out of the window. All right. Um, uh, I'm going to uh, lean in and uh, touch you on the shoulder to try and get your attention. All right. I, I, I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little startled when you, you touch me. Like, Are you, you okay? Know, I'm snipping. Oh, uh, I... I'm okay. I just, I just didn't get enough sleep last night, I guess. How you, did you get those uh get that merchandise uh stacked up nice uh, nice and neatly in the back? Yeah, just about. It's almost done. Okay. Um and I'm looking around and the store is what pretty empty. I'm like, well, it's empty. Uh, yeah, I'm like if you uh once you get done, um why don't you take a little break? Um the question is, do we have like a coffee shop or anything like that nearby? Or we, do we serve coffee here? Not really, but you probably do serve coffee. All right. So I'm like, well, before you take your break, can you, um, would you be a deer and, and, and uh, put on a pot of coffee for me? I just can't seem to wake up. Yeah, sure and, thing. And I go back staring, staring out the window. And um, I imagine that our shop is... 
where we're at the edge of town. You're you're kind of right in the middle of the town. Okay, centrally do have, located. Do 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 I have a like a uh, a line of sight to like the uh, I guess the, the the water? Not really. Straight across the street is a pub. Okay. Um, there's a few few other buildings in town, and then there's the the docks would be just to the just to the right and uh, and and then straight on to uh, to the sea. Your, your shop faces north. Okay. Um, well, I'm staring at the pub. And, um, well, I'm kind of staring out the window, and then my eyes sort of lock onto the pub, and my face starts to uh, start to, to, to frown up a bit, you know, a bit frustrated, and I let out a, a heavy sigh. And um, I'll walk outside and, and light up a cigarette, and... Um, walk around the shop and actually look down down the roadway towards the docks. Okay. As you uh as you're looking in that direction, um you can see uh Dr. Ellis, your brother, uh walking towards you. Um he's just looks like he's out for a midday stroll. It's about eleven AM. Okay. Hey Ellie. Oh, if I see him, hey Ellie, how you, what's going on today? How are you doing? Well, you know, it's well as it could be expected. How are you, Mark? A little concerned. Um, you yeah, you happen. don't look like you slept well. No, I haven't. Um, have you seen Dirk around? No, I haven't seen much of anybody about. I mean, the fog only lifted an hour ago, and I've been in uh, in my office. That's kind of strange. I mean. Usually, you know, he goes out fishing mainly during the evenings, and he's, he's usually back by morning. Mm -hmm. I woke up this morning, um, like I said, I couldn't sleep well for some reason, but I got up early, and, you know, I went to fix breakfast, and he wasn't, he wasn't in bed with me. Well, he yeah. does like to stay out all night. Is, is he much later than usual? Yeah, I mean, I haven't, well... Maybe maybe he, he went back to the house when, you know, um, maybe snuck in or whatever. We did have a little fight last night before mm. he left. Maybe he kind of snuck in and was trying to avoid another fight. Yeah, maybe he's sleeping one off, eh? Yeah. Maybe I'm just worrying about nothing. Maybe he's just... Do you want me to drop by the house to see if he's there? If, well, um, if, you're not, if you're not busy... I have... Plenty of time this afternoon. Might take this, me a little bit. Uh, the town is small enough that you literally live, you know, 30 seconds down the street in a little mm -hmm. house. So it's even just walking away from your shop, you know, you figure Bobby okay. will take care of anything that goes on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, he's, I'll tell you, you know what? Um, we can go there together now if you want. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, Bobby's just putting putting on some coffee. So yeah, we, can, we can go there, check, and if, if he's there, then I'm busy just worrying about nothing, you know. Um, yeah, so do you, want to, do you want to stop it and tell Bobby that we'll be a few minutes? Yeah, yeah. so I'll, I'll run back in and I'll, I'll let Bobby know. Um, I'm just going to run down to check to see if if, uh, if Dirk made it back from, from fishing last night. Um, and, I, and, I, and I tell you, like, you know, once the coffee's done, I mean, if you want to, of course, if you want to take a break, there's nobody really coming into our shop, but feel free. Just watch the shop for us, for me. No problem, Margaret. You can trust me. Of course I can trust you. All right. So you walk down the street, get to your little house. Um, it's a little two-story thing. Uh, you never had kids. So it's, you know, it's pretty neat and clean. Um, you're always, you're always scolding Dirk because he comes in with muddy boots. Yeah. Um, but, uh, there's, there's no evidence that Dirk could come home. He's not there. There's no muddy boots. What's Dirk's boat's name? The Margaret. Oh, mm -hmm. um, so, uh, maybe we should go and see if the boat's still out or if anybody's seen him at the docks. Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah. This is late for him, right? I mean, he comes back in the wee hours, but not until. Yeah, he usually comes like like early morning. 
um, yeah. early enough for me when I get up to, to get ready for, to open up the shop for me to put on some breakfast or something like that for him. And nothing today. Mm. Now I'm really worried. Um, the docks are just once again another three yeah. minutes to walk down the street. Yeah, and we can just stop by the tackle shop on the way and tell Poppy where we're at. Yeah. He's a nervous type. So uh, mm. you do that. You tell Bobby where you're going, and uh, you walk down to the docks. Now, uh, Gravesport is small. There, there are uh, a number of uh, fishermen in town. Um, most of them have small fishing vessels that are sail. They have sails on them. Okay. Uh, the only three boats in town that have a steam engine, um, they have sails, but they also have a steam engine. One is the Margaret. The other one is the Coast Guard uh, uh, ship, which is down at the Coast Guard station. And the other one is uh, the Henrietta, which is owned by um, uh, Doogie Blake. And uh, Doogie is standing there uh, while he's tying something down. Okay next to his uh, boat. Um, do I see the, the Margaret? No, Margaret's not there. All right. Um, I'm going to hail Doogie uh, and ask him how, if he's just come in or, or what, uh, where he's at in his day. I think we're having some connection problems. Mm. Seems obvious. Um, uh, Doogie tells you basically that uh, uh, he wasn't planning on going out today, but uh, you know he's just just maintenance, general maintenance. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so you haven't seen uh, Dirk go out or come in or any such. Um, he's not here. Uh, uh, Doogie tells you that. Uh, yeah, he says, uh, he says, Dirk went out last night, maybe about uh, 8 o'clock. Uh, he didn't take anyone with him. Uh, the, the weather is fine. Uh, do you, can you think of any reason he wouldn't be back by now? No. Wow. Unless, he, uh, unless he got drunk and slept on the, sh on, on the boat. <clears throat> is tide coming in or out? Um, it's in right now. So if he were just drifting, he might have he might be in sight. Yeah. Uh, the Coast Guard boat has an engine. How, how uh, is the what's the staff there like? Is it a skeleton crew? Is there somebody there? It's it's barely a skeleton crew. Yeah, they almost never get calls. So I'll go up to the the Coast Guard. And I'll, I'm sure everything's fine, Margaret. But I do think we should look into this. It seems very strange. Yeah. So, okay. uh, so yeah, it's the I guess the Coast Guard. Yeah, when you probably. when you get to the Coast Guard, you find that the Coast Guard is not there. That uh, mm -hmm. uh, the person inside tells you that they hey, guys, uh, you're having some pr trouble. Yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, it keeps throwing me off. Sorry about that. I don't know why. And then I'm on, and some keeps throwing me off, and I can't explain why. Well, we'll 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 keep plugging ahead, and hopefully you'll you'll stick long enough to, to be able to play. Sorry about that. It's uh, I wonder if they're having storms or something somewhere between us. Maybe it's just my iPad. No. I know there's going on in Philly, but I don't know what. I might not have much to do with it. Well, he yeah, he's in Denmark, so. Ah. Um. Uh, Doogie, what you've done is you've informed that you were at the at the dock and you told them that you saw you saw Dirk go out about eight o'clock last night. Yes, he hasn't come back. Um, the Coast Guard, uh, the the one person there at the Coast Guard right now, tells you that there was a fire uh, 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 going towards Puget Sound, uh, so they left. They left about four hours ago. And uh, they probably won't be back for hours and hours and hours and hours. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, uh, 
I wonder, Doogie, if you would consider taking this out uh, for a little spin to see if we can locate Dirk, because the Coast Guard's not going to be able to do it. And uh, I think Margaret's getting anxious. Yeah. Um, what I, here's a question, too, for you. Um, would I know perhaps some of his like favorite fishing spots? Like, if he's you know caught like a big catch or something like that, would he like talk about? Oh, I was out, you know this. You know, I went this way. I went west. Or probably, yeah, probably. Okay. So um, yeah, yeah. We'll uh, we'll look you know towards some of his favorite spots to see if we can um, spot him. Um, before we do leave, I will run to the. Um, Back to the, the store. I'll pick up um, some binoculars or something like that to help me, you know. And um, depending on how long we're going to be, I'll grab just for just for uh, general purposes. I'll grab like a flashlight or two. Yeah, uh, Margaret, if you don't mind, I'm going to drop by the office and pick up my medical bag just in case we should uh, okay. find them injured in some way. It wouldn't hurt. Okay. Uh, when you come back by the store and I see you grabbing all this, Margaret, um, I'm going to stop you and, uh, <clears throat> Margaret, is, is everything okay? You, we can't find, something? We, we can't find Dirk. Dirk didn't come home from, from his fishing trip last night. I don't know what's going on. I'm hoping there that he didn't run into any sort of problems or, I'm just, I'm just hoping that uh, and nothing bad happened to him, you know. Um, and I'm like standing there and kind of like wringing my hands and I'm kind of pacing a little bit, just looking for stuff that I would need. Um, so I grab the flashlights, I grab um, binoculars, I'll grab some rope just in case we need to reel in a ship or something like that, um, like a rope and tackle. Um, it's probably all that stuff on the on the boat too. Yeah, um, but I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking too clearly, so I start grabbing that type of stuff anyway. Um, and Ellie said he's going to get his medical kit. All right. Um, okay. Um, I'll grab. You know what? I'll grab provisions too, like rations or whatever, um, because we might be out there all day. So I'll grab some. Um, some like uh, smoked meat or something like that, uh, like beef jerky or something, and um, right. trail mix and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm going to head back out, salted fish or something. I don't know. How uh, large how is Doogie's boat? Um, well, I'll let me show you a picture of the, uh, the Margaret, and it's pretty much an identical boat. But you had something to say, Bobby? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop you before you uh, leave the store, Margaret. Um, uh, Margaret, if uh, if you think it could be this bad, I'd, I'd feel a lot better if I went with you here. Uh, you could never hurt to have some extra hands, especially when you're going out in the water when it's this cold. Um, I think about it, um, and I think about the store, and I see how not busy we are. I'd be like, all right, let's, let's – uh, you know what let's lock up i'll put a sign closed uh closed for the day or something okay uh, yeah bobby uh yeah I, I, we, yeah we can use all the help um Bob, bobby has a fairly decent amount of, of sailing experience because he's he's gone out with dirk before okay this is what the margaret actually show, looks like uh so it's fairly small okay Hmm. All right. Um, with a steam engine, I'm assuming it's a steel frame boat. Yes. Oh, that's pretty tough. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it also has a stay a sail. Although you'll notice no fishermen are out today because there's no wind. Okay. Um, do I know of any sort of like um, I guess if there's like rock formations or something that might uh, catch the boat up out out in the sea? You're not that familiar with it, but okay. uh, but Doogie should be. Okay. Um, like a million and one things are running through my mind right now. 
Kim, I'm so sorry. <laughs> the thing that you're popping in and out. Um, so uh, what I'll do is I'll I'll play I'll play Doogie when when Kim you you cut out. Okay. Can you hear us, Kim? He's stuck again. No, oh, poor guy. He was looking forward to this all day. <laughs> all right, so. Um, so you head on down to Doogie's boat, the Henrietta, and, uh, you, uh, you head out. It's now about noon. Um, once you get just three or 400 feet off the coast, uh, it's like a bank of fog. So... But, uh, he starts heading down the coast, going fairly slowly, um, you're heading uh, uh, northwest. So in this bank of fog, visibility is, we can barely see one end of the boat to the other? You, you can see maybe 50 feet, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's about it. And there's no wind, so the water's not too choppy. Right, the water's pretty smooth. And Doogie knows the coast well enough to go along, you know. Sure. Just on a compass. Yes. I shall enjoy a uh, a pipe of tobacco. Okay. So you smoke, and you you probably have hot coffee and everything else that you brought with you in thermoses. And you're probably dressed in your, uh, you know, your high-collared sweaters, and uh, you're well protected from the cold. And the it's chilly. It's not freezing. It's just chilly. Um, the damp is good for us. So you head along. Uh, for about the first hour, I'd like everyone to do a spot hidden roll. I got an eight. Six for 60. So. Okay. Uh, 54 out of 45. Um, you're kind of, you're, you're navigating so that you can tell more or less where you are, but you're actually out quite a ways from the coast, um, hoping that you'll, you'll see something. And uh, Margaret, the first thing you hear is uh, the sound of a, a buoy ringing. So you know that you're, you know that you're quite a ways out. Um, but then through the fog, you definitely see a shape that's probably a boat. So I'll, I'll, I'll yell out. Um... Which side is it? Is it starboard or port? Uh, port side. I'll say, um, basically, uh, I'm, I have a visual on a port side. Um, it's still foggy, so if, I, if we were to flash lights, it will reflect back, so it kind yeah. of, yeah. I've got an extreme. Can I recognize anything about the shape? Well, yeah, it's definitely a boat. And as you, as you turn towards it, as you turn around, you're, you're going kind of around it and coming closer. You can see that it is, in fact, Margaret. And there it seems to just be drifting in the water. The engines are not on. The sails are not up. So I'm going to start shouting halloos at it. Okay. Uh, there's no answer. Now, as, um, you pull, as you pull closer to it, everybody do a spot hidden for me. 28, it's good. I got a six. 45, right on the money. It's a hard. Okay. Margaret, a... once again, Margaret's the eagle eye. Uh, Margaret knows the boat probably better than anybody else. You notice that there are um, some really, really big uh, scratches along one side of the boat, uh, the port side of the boat. Um, they're kind of sideways like this like it scraped up against a bunch of rocks okay um is, is it letting on what is, is there a puncture it doesn't look like they're gashes they're just it's where all the paint has been scraped off on one side i'll point it out to the to the rest of the guys mm -hmm. you're also pretty sure that something is wrong with the rigging that that something has happened on the boat but you can't tell you know from from this boat if okay. if you pull up uh, 
Doogie, if you pull up next to it, I'll I'll go uh, I'll go over and uh, check the ship. Okay. I think we all should go over and check the ship. But yeah, let's let's um, try to link our ships together. Okay. So Doogie pulls alongside of it and uh, throws a couple of ropes over. It's it's fairly easy, Bob, for you to jump to the other ship and secure the two ships together. Um. Uh, okay, so are you all going to climb onto the other ship? Yeah. Okay. Um, when you climb onto the other ship, it's immediately apparent uh, that the uh, that the deck of the ship is is in disarray. That there's uh, pieces pushed, uh, things that are pushed out of the way, and um, the winch actually looks like it's been damaged in some way, uh, like something uh, something smashed up against the winch. Um, uh, the nets are, uh, just lying there. They're not, uh, they're not rigged up. Um, something was on, something, something came on the ship and, and tore it up a little bit. And there's no sign of Dirk. No sign of Dirk. Um, are the nets wet? Uh, they're, they're damp because everything is damp. Mm. But they're not like soaking wet. No, they're not soaking wet. It doesn't look like they were ever put in the water. Uh, and I'm going to, you know, stick my head in the wheelhouse. Obviously, Dirk's not in there. Uh, Dirk is not in the wheelhouse. And there is, there is a steam engine under, there's a, a lower deck. It's, it's oh. you know, it's a small boat, so it's a really tight lower deck. But there is an a engine down there. All right. I'm, I'm going to suggest that Bobby start getting the uh, Margaret ship shape and that Margaret stay on top while I go down and look around. Okay. All right. And Doogie's okay. just going to stay on board the Henrietta. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. All right. Um, you start looking around. Um, who's, uh, well, who's looking at what? Uh, Bob, uh, Bobby, I'm going to, I'm going to be, uh, looking around the winch, just trying to get it into something so we can take it back to port. Okay. Uh, I'd like to go down into the, the winch, holder. Okay. Bobby, the winch looks like uh, you, you don't understand what you're looking at at all. It almost looks like something something um, pushed the winch with such force side to side that it actually bent the framework of the winch. Um, I mean, uh, it just goes through your mind that, like, if, if, he'd have, if he'd have hooked a whale, it wouldn't have been able to do something like this. Uh, it would have broken the cable before it would have bent the winch side to side. So something, something happened. Maybe he crashed into something. With the scrapes on the side of the boat, it could be something like that. Um, Dr. Ellis, you go downstairs and, uh, go ahead and do a spot hidden for me. 33 from 60. So almost a hard, um, there's something odd there. There's definitely places where it looks like things have been damaged, almost like they've been, uh, crushed. They've been pushed back towards the sides of the boat. Um, there's a, a post that sort of, you know, supports the upper deck that's been bent sideways, but a few steps down and you realize that the ground is covered in a kind of slime, uh, that definitely shouldn't be there. Uh, natural world roll. Go ahead. I failed. It's, well, it, it's slime. It looks like slime, but you don't know from what. Um, I've probably handled eels. Hagfish are really slimy. Uh, they're they're eel like. Yeah, it reminds you of that. Is, has he ever netted hagfish in any quantity? Hagfish are fairly common, so he, probably. But this this is a lot of slime. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, and I'm calling out, and there's no answer? No answer. Not that far. You can see all the way to the other. You can see to the 
the the burner uh with uh there's a big pile of coal there uh, mm -hmm. but the 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 furnace is off mm -hmm. there's no heat coming off of it at all oh uh, yeah and there's no place a human body would fit down here that i wouldn't be able to see it that you wouldn't be able to see it now all right well i've got bad news for margaret Margaret, you're up on, on the deck still. What are you doing? So um, while um, Ellie and, uh, and Bobby are, are doing their thing, I'm looking around the deck um, just to try to piece out what might have happened to see. I'm, I don't know. Right now, um, my mind is kind of fritzy. So I'm looking, sort of going over things just to look under things just to see if he's sleep under there or balled right. up or curled up somewhere. Like, it's just like when you lose your keys or you lose something sure. and you just look pretty much everywhere and, you know. And it, it takes you all of five minutes. There's just not that many places a human body could be and you don't see anything. But please do a spot hidden for me. Uh, 42 out of 60. Okay. The anchor is missing. Hmm. In fact, the chain is down, but there's no anchor on it. It's been snapped. The chain has been. Which doesn't seem at all possible. Right. Not at all, because even if he caught, caught on something under the water... It would just anchor the ship. That's what anchors do. It doesn't make any sense. There's a mechanism for the anchor. Does it look like it's been broken? Um, it looks like it's taken a lot of stress damage. Something, something very powerful. Uh, you just don't, you can't figure it out. Something has, has torn the, torn the anchor off the ship. All right. One of the things I'm going to do, it may, it may not make or seem like it's making sense, but I'm going to look around to see if there's bottles of, uh, of booze or something like that around, um, just, you know, like empty bottles or something like that. Let's see okay. Yeah. Been, you, you find bottles. You find, and they're uh, pretty, they're pretty much empty. So I'm thinking now, that you know he probably came out here he probably got drunk and he did something to to fuck up the anchor i don't know how it was, it was possible but he fucked up the anchor and he probably scraped up against something it doesn't make any sense and i mean he might have been out a bit further too because with no anchor this this ship has just been drifting um Which means if he's not up here and Ellie's saying there's nobody down there, I'm wondering if he fell overboard. And then I'm starting to get a bit more worried. Like, Jesus, he, 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 he must have fallen overboard. He must have scraped up against something, maybe some rocks or, or something out there. And he was standing too close to, to the side and he tipped and he fell over. And because he's been drinking, he couldn't get himself back on board. And now I'm like, you know, I, I sit down somewhere. Or maybe if there's no seat, I'm sitting flat on the ground. There's I'm, places to sit, yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm starting to freak out a bit, you know. Um, I'm starting to shake and, you know. Okay. Uh, Doogie has a radio, I assume? Uh, yes. Uh, I think that with no sign of the, uh, of the boat's operator, we need to send out an SOS, uh, ask for Coast Guard assistance. Uh, and also, I'd be curious if there's any ships in the vicinity, because he might have run up against a larger vessel rather than you know, something inanimate. Well, there shouldn't be any show. larger vessels in this area. Um, I suppose it's possible. As far as you know, the only 
the only boats with a steam engine are are these two right here. Mm -hmm. The Coast Guard ship, but the Coast Guard gone. So, um, yeah. But if there's any hope for Dirk, it's probably that he's on another vessel. Uh, if he was in distress, maybe somebody picked him up. Um, Doogie uh, tries. He he manages to get a hold of the Coast Guard. Um, but they're like hours away now. They're like exactly. Four. Yeah, they don't have any way of getting out here. I mean, there's nobody to get out here at the moment. Um, uh, at, at, it looks like Doogie's about the only person who can help at this point. Um, he tells you if you can get the engine going, of course, you guys can pilot it in. Uh, Bob's Bob's piloted boats well enough. So is Margaret that she could probably yeah, um, come back. Is, uh, is Doogie's ship anchored right now? Uh no, it's it's just attached to the boat. Okay, and um, because I'm trying to, I don't know if this is possible or not, but I'm trying to like get an idea of which direction this ship might have been drifting from. Like which, yeah, like which direction? Well, it's hard to tell. Um, yeah, because it's very calm right now. Um. Well, yeah, the tide's going in, so he might have been farther out, but that's about all we know. Yeah. Uh, which, which Bobby, do you know of any shoals or, or rock outcroppings or anything nearby that, that he might have run into? Um. Well, Canada is to the north. Um, not really that far. Um, but you're right. You're right on the the the, the edge between uh, uh, the. I think it's called the Strait of San Juan de Fuca, Fuca or something like that, yeah. and the open ocean. One day, yeah, yeah, that Strait. It's weird. F U C A. I don't know how that's Fuca, Fusa, Fuca. I think it's Fuca, Fusa, something like that. Fusa, no. Fusa, Fuca, Fusa. <laughs> it's Spanish because it's Juan, San Juan. Yeah. This could be Italian. <laughs> uh, I, no, it was uh, the Spanish Empire that, not Empire, because they weren't the Empire anymore, but it was the Spanish that did it. I had to take Washington State history. Wow. Yeah, um, I'm great at that. <laughs> um. Are there any small islands nearby? Yeah, that's the kind of thing I'd be curious about. Any kind of rock outcropping that he could have gotten stuck on. As far as you know, there's no islands out here. Um, uh, there are there are rock outcroppings, of course, right near the coast, um, but nothing out this far. In my medical opinion, does Margaret need sedation yet? No, I'm not there yet. Well, she, maybe she just needs some comfort. Yeah. I'm afraid there's a little of that available right now. It looks bad. Um, I assume, are, are my shoes slimy from the stuff down below the, bot the bottoms of them are, yeah. Uh, uh, so I'd like to ask Bobby about that too. Has he ever seen like a quantity of slime like this on board? I'm going to go ahead and roll natural world for it. No. No. Yeah, okay. you don't even have to roll. You've never seen. And why it would be down below decks. And there's a lot of it, like gallons. Well, it's all over everything. It's on vertical surfaces as well as horizontal ones? Yeah, no, it's not on the ceiling, but it's on it's on the posts and it's on the, the sides and the bottom. Like a big earthworm moves through the below deck. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I don't, I'm going to mention this to Bobby quietly because I don't want Margaret any more freaked out. Uh, no, no, I, I've never, I've never seen anything like no. this. This is very strange. <laughs> to believe. No. Um, maybe, uh, I guess we should, we should uh, get the uh, Margaret 
underway again under her own power. And then maybe the two boats can move outward from here in like a spiral to try to see if, you know, Dirk's floating on a bit of something or other. I like that idea. I think that's our best bet. Okay. So what are you going to do to... Uh... Start the Margaret's engine is first. I think Bobby's probably... Well, Bobby or Margaret. Maybe Margaret should do it and take her mind off things. Yeah, I will. I, I kind of, you know, I know that um, sitting around and worrying isn't going to do any, any good. That's right. Dirt, so I, I'm going to make myself useful. And um, yeah, I will, I will get the ship. I mean, if we can, is, is, was there plenty of fuel down, down There's there? coal. There's coal down below. Okay. Um, so are you going to have Margaret come down and stoke the furnace and... I assume I don't know particularly how to get the motor going. Oh, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it. Um, well, then so, you're going to see all the slime. Yeah, I have to tell you, there's something weird going on uh, below decks, just so you should be, you know, just so you know. I think there were, somehow there were a bunch of eels down here uh, that have gotten away. It's, there's a weird slime. And the, the, the ship hasn't taken on any, any sort of water. Doesn't I couldn't like, see it. No, it's hmm. damp. It's damp because of all the slime. But yeah, but but like it's not like there's a puncture, and then it doesn't look like there's a puncture any kind of any kind. Um, Bobby also knows how to get the ship going. So yeah, Bobby, if you can if you can um, start the engines up, I'll I'll uh, I'll pilot the ship. Okay. Well, thing, Margaret. I'll take care of that. Um, Bobby, when you start, um, you, you have to get some coal in the in the furnace and all that and get it lit. Um, you're having a real hard time. It looks like that the uh, the coal itself has been uh, kind of soaked with this slime. Um, uh, but we'll say that uh, you know it, it, you're, it, you're having difficulty with it. Um, but it's going to take you maybe 15 minutes to get it actually going. Uh, Doctor and Margaret, what are you guys doing while he's trying to get the furnace going? Um, I'm setting, setting up in, in the um, wheelhouse. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to look, search the deck for any other indication of what he ran into or any sign of his, you know. I'm assuming that Margaret left the bottles <laughs> visible where she uncovered them. Yeah, they're they're here and there. Yeah. Um Margaret, go ahead and do a spot hidden for me. Uh that is a fail. That's a 69. Okay. Um you don't know why, but as you are uh you're trying to get the the engine started. You you know that Bobby's trying to get the steam going. Um it, you're having trouble you're having trouble getting the whole thing uh, going. Um, there also seems to be some problem with uh, the steering. That when you try to turn the ship side to side, when you try to turn the rudder, it's like there's something jammed in the rudder. Hmm. We didn't bring any diving equipment, did we? No, no and it's really cold. Um, the water's probably said... 40 degrees. Um, because I know, I mean, I, I, I'm not really completely 100% sure in real life about the structure of ships, but there should be a, um, like the propellers um, that will propel the, the ship forward, um, particularly on a steam style uh, ship. Um, do we have like a, one of those, uh, I, I would call it my lance, but like the long pole. The gaff. Ships. A gaff. Long, long stick. Yeah, I'm sure there's a couple of gaffs on board the ship. All right, so I'll I'll uh, I'll go out. I'll grab one and I'll go towards the back to see if there's anything stuck. Okay. There. Um, so go ahead and do a, a luck roll for me. And that one is a fail as well. Sixty-six. Okay. 
the water the water is uh is fairly still but it's uh it's murky so you can't you 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 think that you might be hooking uh part of the um the rudder because your hook's kind of in that area but you can't really feel whether the the rudder is is bent to one side or if well i'll i'll i'll, I'll, I'll take the time to maneuver it just to whatever you you're trying to maneuver down there you can't get anything to move so if you if you're trying to push the rudder side to side you can't seem to push anything around something is jammed up down there and i can't just try to like push down to try to unjam you try but nothing nothing seems to be unjamming I'd like to call over to Doogie and tell him that we're uh, trying to get the Margaret underway, but having some difficulties. Okay. Uh, and and you know, I didn't I didn't notice anything during the night. But was there a storm or anything that would? No, uh, no. Uh, it was good weather last high. night. Well, Doogie's ship is about the same size as our ship, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, is it possible for him to tow? This it's ship? possible. He could he could rig that up. Okay. Um, it would be, uh, it would take him a while to rig up the two ships together. Um, at the same time, it would be twice as long to get back. Uh, I would, yeah, I imagine, but this, the ship isn't going to move. So, right. Right. Um, to, to try to cut the, the time down in half, I'll, um, I'll call Bobby back up and perhaps Bobby and I can help, um, help him out. Okay. Um, so if that's your plan, if you're going to try and, and, and tow it back, um, but now uh, we can't go out and search for, well, once it, we, once we get back, I'll hopefully the Coast Guard will be by that time with us rigging the ships together and us taking twice as long to get back. Hopefully by that time, the Coast Guard will be back and then we can go out. Okay. Back out. Um, uh, Doogie, uh, pulls the ship, uh, the boat away from your boat. And uh, he kind of tries to position it up front uh, and throws a couple of ropes back and forth so that you can secure the one boat to the other. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Bobby, do a spot hidden roll. Uh, 48, that's a fail. Okay. Um, uh, so you're, you're doing this, you're, you're, you just more or less begun to do this. Um, Margaret, once again, do a, a spot hidden roll. All right. That's a 38 out of uh, 60. Okay. Um, Bobby had, uh, had been trying to get the boat going and, uh, it annoys you that, uh, and it feels like the rudder is jammed, but maybe just the wheel is jammed. Um, you go up there and you tr you're, you're yanking on it, trying to get the wheel to come loose. And that's when you notice that um, something, that there's a piece of, of, a small piece of paper that was on the, the main part of the, the wheel deck and it fell back behind the compass. And uh, as you reach for it, uh, this is what you find. And it's in, uh, it's in Dirk's handwriting. Gonna be rich. There's a coordinates. All right. Um, So I'll I'll, um, I'll stop what I'm doing, and I will call over Bob, and I will call over Dirk, and I'll call Ellie up, and I will show them this, and I'll let them know that this is in Dirk's handwriting. Um, these are, perhaps this is the last known coordinates that he was in. Um, can you make any sense of this? Uh, um, when uh, Doogie takes a look at it, 
he says, he says, well, if those coordinates are accurate, it's about 50 miles off the coast out in open ocean. Do we have a map? Oh yeah. I mean, he would have a chart. Um, and he, is, uh, are, are, are the two ships um, completely rigged up right now or are they? No, they're, they're you just had sort of started doing that. Um, okay. Actually, he pulls out the chart that there's probably a chart that, that Dirk has. Mm -hmm. uh, he pulls that out and lays it on the table and looks for the coordinates. And it's, it's about 50 miles off the coast, but it's right in the middle of nowhere. He says, there's nothing out there. Well, there's something out there and it was something that well, Dirk was interested in. So if we have any hope of uh, locating him or figuring out what he ran into, we might need to go out there. The question is if we leave the Margaret behind, if it's going to just run aground and be destroyed, or if we want to take well, the time to try to tow it. It's, yeah, well, it's right now, um, it's drifting. And it's, I mean, these waters are calm. So, um, and right now, I'm more concerned about Dirk than in his ship, you know. Um, I say, um, because it's going to be a while for us to rig this up, take it back to shore, have the Coast Guards come out with us. And in the meantime, uh, Dirk, something bad could be happening to him right now. He could, he could be floating out in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, also, though, if there's nothing at these coordinates, you know, maybe Dirk wasn't entirely thinking clearly when he wrote it down. Do we really want to say well, that? The thing, even if there's, there's no, nothing out there, he may have gone out there and he might be out there. This, you know, all this, the, 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 the shape that the ship is in right now, all that could have happened out there. Like I say, he could have probably been drinking. I mean, he's he has been drinking, and something could have fell over overboard. Yeah. I'm hoping that he drowns or anything like that. Do I know if he can swim or not? Oh, sure, he can. I, swim. I imagine he could, being a fisherman. Even but, with um, a, even with a, you know, a life preserver in this water for a few hours. Well, yeah. no. It's about 40 degree water. He would last about 15 minutes before he'd die of hyperthermia. Yeah. Right. But uh, I might be more concerned about my sister's emotional well being than practical. Well, if, if we were to go back right now, my emotional well being wouldn't get better, it would actually get worse. I need to find Dirk, I need to find him now. I think Margaret's um, right. Uh, the way the winch was bent out of shape, it would have taken something big, something a lot bigger than would be around in these waters so close to shore. Is there some way we can uh, put a, uh, something on the Margaret that will help us find it later to recover? Mm -hmm. Not a radio train, there's no transponders or anything. We just yeah, have to like that. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, wait, it, it's a fishing ship. Right? Do we have uh, uh, any any of those like bright orange buoys we could tie to it? Maybe we could see that easier than the ship itself. Well, it's got it's got things like that on it, but it's not really in the fog. You're still not going to be able to see it that way. How about this? How how about this? Um, before I found this, I was I was struggling with the the wheel. Um, is there any way for me to get that unstuck? Or is that sort of a lost cause? I don't know. You can try. I could try. And maybe I can... I know it would probably... You know, I don't have the upper body strength that, you know, my brother or, or Bobby might have. But um, perhaps if I can get help to try to move it a bit, maybe we can get it unstuck. And if that's the case, then we can give it to, um, to Doogie. We can take his ship to the coordinates. And if he, we can get this up and running, he could take the, the Margaret back to, to shore, wait for the, uh, the Coast Guards, and we'll give them the same uh, coordinates. And so the Coast Guards can probably come back out with Doogie. Oh uh, yeah, Doogie doesn't like that idea at all. <laughs> that boat's his livelihood. 
It's like having one car to get yourself back and forth to work and letting your friend drive it around without you being there. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, is, is Doogie the treasure hunting kind? Would he be excited by going to be rich? Well, he's not worried about that so much. I mean, being he's worried like Dirk. Dirk. He likes he Dirk. Doesn't he doesn't want, you know, if Dirk's, if Dirk's stranded somewhere or. Or he doesn't want to let his ship out of his sight, basically. Yeah. Practically well, speaking, right. I wish we could keep the Margaret because it's probably all the legacy that Dirk's going to leave his widow, but uh, under the circumstances. Do you see that say that out loud? I did, I did not say that out loud. <laughs> um, Tough love, Margaret. <laughs> Doogie, Doogie's like, you know, look, uh, w there's no storms around anywhere nearby or on the way. Uh, the Margaret will just keep drifting, right? And <clears throat> just have to find it again. Well, yeah. we um, we know this. Well, we we can pin, we can write down the coordinates here, where where the last scene, uh, yeah, last scene, and then we can pretty much do a search from here. And it's, it's and most I'm, likely I'm, just going to drift back towards the coast, and okay. probably end up in a cove somewhere, maybe just floating. Yeah. Let's go and uh, let's go and find out what Dirk was so excited about. Yeah. All right. Um, so Doogie, um, you guys have to unlash the two boats from one another. Um, that takes you a few minutes, and it's now it's about I'm going to say it's about four o'clock. Um, the fog is is not getting thinner; it's getting thicker. Um. But you all, you all pile on board the Henrietta and you start to head towards the coordinates. Uh, uh, Dirk tells you that, you, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Doogie tells you that uh, as, you, as you leave this area, uh, the water's going to get choppier because you're going to be going out into the Pacific Ocean. Okay. Yeah, Pacific Ocean. Um, so you start heading. It's also going to take a couple of hours to get out there. It's quite a ways. Um, all right. We'll assume that a couple of hours have gone by, and you guys are in, in fairly thick fog, and the water is choppy, so the boat's rocking back and forth. Um, I think, Dr. Ellis, you need to do a constitution roll because you're really not used to the, the rocking boat. Uh, 52 for 50, so I just failed. Okay, so you're getting pretty nauseous. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the Pipe smoke helps. Okay. <laughs> helps I've got 70 in pipe smoking, so. All right. Um, but all of you can do a spot hit roll. Ten. 51 to 60. Okay. Uh, 20 for a hard success. Okay. Dr. Ellis, Dr. Ellis got a 10. Dr. Ellis is leaning over the side, getting ready to vomit when he looks up and he notices that through the, through the mist, uh, he can hear something. Um, at first he thinks he's hearing, you know, a lapping of water against something like rock he's hearing this very, very strange noise. Now, the only way to describe it, at first you think that it's seals. Mm -hmm. you know, the way you hear seals doing the er, 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 er. Mm -hmm. But it sounds different. It sounds like, and you've heard seals. Mm -hmm. It sounds almost uh, like people having sex. Hmm. It's it's got an almost uh, human sort of sound to it, but a little bit words. like seals. No, it's like it's like people humping. It's well, first I'm going to call out to Doogie and say, you know, slow down. There's something nearby. Uh, and uh, should I try a natural world or a biology role? Sure. I failed. Okay. Doesn't sound like anything I've ever heard. No. 
it sounds vaguely like seals, but it sounds like humping. <laughs> it's the only way I can describe Just it. the vocalization, though. Right, right. Not any slapping but there's a little bit of water like there might be a landmass a little bit of slapping sound yeah but there's definitely sounds like there's something off in the distance maybe uh 100 feet 200 feet away yeah so if doogie can turn the engine down i'll be able to hear better i can call other people to the prow or whatever so he uh he he turns down he turns he turns off the engine because you're kind of drifting in that direction and uh all of a sudden from uh, out of the fog, uh, looms up these black rocks. They're sharp, and there's a lot of them, and you realize you're approaching a, a coastline of some sort. Not a huge coastline. You can't see anything of it. You can only see about 100 feet in either direction. But it's definitely a coastline. The water is splashing up against it, and just, just as you start to get there, you hear a whole bunch of things leaping into the water on the side, you know, to the sides of you, like seals would do if they were disturbed. And the uh, humping sound goes away. Is this on the, is this, is this on the, on the, um, the charts we have? No. Bobby, you said there was nothing out here. You said there was nothing out here. Look at this great rock. Is this an island? It's not on the charts. I've, I've never been out this far. I usually stay inland and fish so maybe there's something volcanic happening out here that's possible does it is it is there smoke is there steam or is it just rock just fog and rock and uh, the lapping of the water on it and the rock is very black like it could be vulcan volcanic rock is that basalt body is that basalt there you can roll a natural world there, I made it. Yeah, definitely looks like basalt. Oh. I think this is. I think this has to be something that Dirk discovered, and maybe he's here somewhere. Is there any place we can tie up? Is there any place we can? Uh, is there any cove or inlet? Well, you'll have to sort of go around. Right here, there's sharp rocks sticking up out of the ground. And nobody saw oh, what man. splashed into the water. Mm -mm. There were just splashes. I mean, you know, there could be seals on a new uh, island. Yeah, this far north, I wouldn't doubt it. All right. yeah, so, if we're going to find Dirk, this is our best chance, right? He's led us right here. Yeah. And maybe, could he, could the, are the rocks sharp enough to have made the marks that were on the Margaret? That's what I'm thinking. Very likely. Well, then there's hope. All right. So, um, Doogie says, well, he'll, uh, he'll head around along the rocks. We've got to be really careful so that we don't run into rocks because uh, there's definitely rocks sticking up out of, the, out of the ground. Out of the, I see ground, I mean the water sticking up out of the water. Um, So you cruise along for about half an hour. Um, you can't see the sun, but the sun is getting low on the horizon. Uh, the fog is getting darker. Um, it's getting a little tricky to see, but go ahead and do a spot hidden. Doogie's, Doogie is, is driving, so he's Everyone. not looking. 29 is not good. That's a hard success. I got a 30, which is a, a hard as well. Okay. Uh, well, those of you who, who passed with a hard, um, you see a little inlet where uh, there are still some fairly sharp rocks, but it looks like there's a place where you could put the boat, where you could actually get out of the boat onto the rocks without jumping into the water. And, um, and by now you've kind of deemed that this is definitely an island. Have we? Do do I think we've gone around it completely oh, or no. halfway? Oh, no, no, no. So we have a sense that it's surrounded by water, but not how big it is. Into Correct. It. Yeah. Are the rocks slimy looking? Yeah, kind of. Uh, Algae, maybe. Now, um, 
um, Doogie says, you know, this shouldn't be here. There, there, there shouldn't be anything out here. I, and he starts to wonder if, you know, he starts tapping on his compass, make sure that he's not brought you to the Canadian coast and that you're just, you know, freaking yourselves out. But everything seems to indicate that you are, in fact, out in the middle of nowhere and there shouldn't be anything here. And that we were led here by the coordinates that Dirk left. Correct. Yeah. Um, it's getting, it's awfully, it's awfully chilly and it's getting dark. Uh, how much time do we have to explore this little island before we're basically group suiciding on this rock in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> Maybe an hour. Okay. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to like quietly counsel Margaret that we can't, you know, I, I, I'm hoping we'll find Dirk and that he'll be okay, but that we can't stay out here forever. Would, uh, would Bobby have a watch? Hmm. I don't think Bobby could afford a watch. Okay. I would have one. Probably. Yeah, a doctor watch. probably would have one. So if you want to ask me I, something about time. I, I, I nod my head. Um, but secretly, I have no intentions of leaving without Dirk or at least finding out what happened to him. But I will nod my head like, okay, you know, um, but let, if that's the case, let's get to it now. Okay. So Doogie manages to pull the boat up near the rocks and he tells you, you know, here's the thing. I don't really have, I don't want to, I don't want to anchor the boat because if I anchor the boat, these, these rocks look like, you know, I could get my, my anchor caught in the, in the rocks and we wouldn't be able to leave. So I'm going to pull up next to it and you guys can get out and then I'm just going to stay right here off the coast, just 30 feet. Um, just make your way back to the same spot and wave your hands and I'll, I'll come and get you. Do you have any, uh, any more, um, flashlights or a lantern that we can take on at with us? Yeah, we'll assume that you brought some something like that just in case you're out here at night. Um, yeah, well, I, I brought flashlights, remember? Yeah, but I don't know if there's enough for four. Well, there's just three of you. Three of us, um, yeah. Do feel stay. All right. Um, it's nice to be off the boat on the solid ground, much less nauseating. I would like you all to do jump rolls. <laughs> or oh, dex this... rolls. Dex roll or jump roll, whichever one you I'll, have. I'll use I'll use dex. I Don't failed anyway. You. Oh man, I failed by two. Oh you all failed? Sixty nine for forty. Yeah. I'm well on. that's the end of our game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for getting off. Uh, oh man, those uh, rocks. You jump up onto the rocks, a fairly flat rock, but it's very slippery. So as each of you jump, uh, you go down and, uh, and slide on the rock. Um, then the, then the, the, you, you sort of recover, and the next person uh, does exactly the same thing, uh, despite the other ones trying to catch him. Um, so why don't you all do... Uh, it'll just say one point of damage just from hitting hitting yourselves on the rocks. Ow! God damn it. Son of a bitch. Is, are these rocks now that I'm on them? Are they slimy? They're, like the yeah, they, the, some of them have like a coating almost of mud on them. Uh -huh. um, and uh, But it's not all hagfish goo. No. And it's it's strange. Go ahead and do a natural world for me, Dr. Ellis. Dr. Olson. That one I made, 32 for 40. You also find places on the rocks where there's bunches of seaweed. Only the seaweed is up on the rocks. So this is presumably something that was underwater for a period of time and that has come up? Yeah. Uh. It, it seems like that either that or there was a big storm and the water 
flung the seaweed onto the land. Right. That just doesn't. No. But that actually means that Dirk might have been onto something. Like if this has been underwater for a great period of time, there could be any number of curiosities on this little island that would be worth somebody's interest. So that's something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, you start making your way. You're, you're really right on the coastline. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a lot of large black basalt rocks. Uh, there's not much place that's got sand. Um, but you realize as you're moving inward that the, the land, that it slopes upwards and you're climbing over rocks. And as you're doing this, you suddenly begin to think that some of the rocks just seem a little too regular. Um, the angles on some of the rocks are cut just a little too nice and square. The square, not hexagonal or something? No, but like... Right angles. Like at right angles. Like, and, on like uh, somebody's... Like, like human hands had a uh, hand at shaping this. Right. Um, although everything appears, if it, if it is that way, it appears extremely old. It's all pockmarked and, uh, and, you know, has, there's obviously evidence, evidence of things growing on it, uh, bits of coral and, uh, barnacles and, barnacles and stuff like that, which I might add are extremely sharp. The, the barnacles. Oh God, I've fallen on them. They are horrid. horrid. Yeah. So you're being very careful. Um, after you've gone in about 10 minutes, uh, the landscape, the rocks are changing. The rocks almost give you the impression like you're walking into uh, a ruin of some sort. And some of it is very strange. It's almost like there are built-in optical illusions. You're looking at it and you think that this looks like a flat plane going into another area. And as you move a few feet, you realize that it's not a flat plane at all, that it's on an, an odd angle. And what looks like at first a corner and you're moving towards it is actually a concave. It's not convex at all. And, it's very, very strange, and you can all do sanity rolls. <laughs> oh, wow, I failed, failed that. Okay. Yeah, I failed that too. 86 for 50. If, if, you, on 50. if you fail, do a 1d4. Otherwise, you just lose one point. Oh, well, I just lose one point anyway. Um, two. Uh, I have the idea that maybe we should, uh, assuming that we brought rope from Doogie's vessel, that we should lash ourselves together in a group because I don't, it seems like we could fall and at any time, any one of us. I agree. What do you, what do you think? Okay. I know it seems a little extreme, but I don't understand where we are at all or where Dirk is. I'll give you that. I'll say that you're able to rope yourselves together. Nothing could go wrong. And uh, there are, in fact, in places where the ground is slimy and uh, muddy, and uh, they almost appear to be stairs leading upwards, uh, higher up into the island. Uh, There's no vegetation that you can see other than the seaweed here and there on things. Um, but as you're going, go ahead and do another spot hidden for me. This is spot hidden. 60 for 60. Ooh, I got a nine. Nine out of 60. 84 out of 45. <laughs> All right. Um, you realize that you are heading towards what looks like uh, the, the, uh, a cliff side, a cliff face. Uh, li- hanging up in front of you. So it's a wall of rock. Is the fog getting thinner as we're going upward? A little bit. 
but still mm-hmm. everything's damp and foggy and right and the air is the the sky is getting a little darker cuz the sun is now tipping below the horizon here's, here's a question do i hear anything um just, just the the gentle sound of the sea off in the distance what um, does it smell? What does it smell like? I mean, does it just smell like the, the ocean air, or is it? It smells like the ocean air and and seaweed and and stuff like that. Nothing in particular, uh, uh, okay. foul or anything I, like that. I meant to ask when when uh, I came across the uh, slime, did that have a distinct odor to it? Not really. Just kind of smellless. Kind of fish? Like oh oh. Didn't even have a fishy smell. Okay. Well, the boat itself has a fishy smell. Yeah. So, but it wasn't pungent, like. No, not not any more pungent than. And, and living in a fishing village, you guys are so used to that smell, you probably right. hardly smell it at all. Um, as you're approaching this cliffside, and there's a there's a huge sort of cavernous uh, opening, um, which. You want to think is natural, except that it's it's definitely not like a a, a big, big archway, and it's definitely not like a door frame. It's got a very strange shape to it, but it doesn't look natural. It almost looks like it's hewn out. And as you're sort of cresting a little bit of hill right right in front of this, not maybe maybe twenty feet away from it. Margaret, you look over, and uh, in front of it, uh, you see uh, the glint of something bright and gold on the uh, on the cliff face, and lying in front of it is a body, and it's I'll, dressed in what Dirk was dressed in yesterday. I'm going to run over, and I'm going to oh, Dirk. Okay, uh, but I know I. I'm, I, I, I totally forgot that I'm tied to the rest of these guys, so I'm running, and I get to I guess the end of my. Let's let's all do a dex rolls. <laughs> Finally, I made it. Okay. Oh uh, right, I made it. Mar- Margaret almost pulls you all down, uh, <laughs> but uh, you manage uh, you manage to keep your footing. The ground is slippery, uh, but as you get over there, you see that. You're sure that it's Dirk, although he's face down and sort of sprawled out on the rock. Uh, You can see there are places where he's bloody. Okay, so Mark, it's time to to make sure that Margaret's in the rear of us. I don't know what what sequence we're tied together. I think she just pushed her way to the front. Yeah, Yeah, I I, I, like, so, you know, Margaret, uh, I'm going to do whatever I can. Uh, I want you to be strong for a moment and, oh. and let me just investigate and see how Dirk's doing and what I can do. And I've got All right, my... so I'll, I'll, I'll step aside. Um, and while he's working on Dirk, you said that there was something gold that was glinting. I, I mean, I'm going to have a look at that. Okay. Well, at the moment, I mean, let's let's deal with Dirk first because yeah. you yeah. Yeah, run up. Is, it, is the body cold? Oh, yeah. It's cold. It's slimy. It's cold and slimy. So uh, before I roll him over, I'm pretty sure that he's no longer. Oh yeah, you're pretty sure he's not. He's uh, he looks b- uh, battered. Uh, there are some gashes on his skin. Um, so you roll him over. Yeah, calling to Bobby to hold Margaret. Yeah. Uh, when you roll him over, um. You can tell almost immediately that his arms have been broken. Um, uh, he definitely looks like he's been beaten about. And um, there is a strange yellow uh, stuff around his lips and his nostrils and around the openings in his ears. Um it almost looks like little, little teeny tiny balls of yellow all around his lips. Fungal? It looks fungal. Shall I roll some natural world or biology? Sure. 14. 
14. So whatever oh. I, alien thing it is, I know what it's not. Uh, uh, your best guess would be almost like a fungus, like, like spore bodies uh, that are on his, that are growing on his lips, orifices. Um, uh, given that they are reminiscent of um, spore bodies, mm -hmm. Do I have any reason to think that they're likely to burst or that they're ripe or that they're a, an immediate danger? Unless you actually try to scrape them with something, there's mm. not really a way to tell. Mm. Uh, and he, how, uh, he's been dead for a day? At least. At least. Um, is there a sanity check involved in this? <laughs> Actually, yes, you all do a sanity check. And I failed again. Ooh, I did 12. 62 for 48. Um, Margaret needs to be handled a little separately on this one, but um, if, if you failed uh, 1d4, if you didn't, you know, 1d3. Margaret, mm -hmm. I think you need to do uh, 1d4 plus 1. Okay, even if even if I passed. Yeah, even if you passed. One D four plus one. Your husband. So that's three. I um, am currently at four uh, points of sanity loss. Okay. Just and, just count. And that brings me to six in about a, a half an hour or an hour. Yeah, that brings oh. me to five. That's okay. Um. Margaret, you're very upset, obviously. And uh, what I would have said is if, if you'd have gotten like five points, you would have grabbed Dirk and held him, you know, despite the... Um, uh, the other two, I'd like you to do uh, spot hidden rolls, uh, Bob and, and Dr. Ellis. That's the first one I failed. Okay, neither one of you. Uh, Margaret, uh, yes. go ahead and do a, a, you said you wanted to look at the, the thing in the wall that was gold. Yeah. When you look over at that, you're very upset. So you're thinking more about Dirk than anything else. Yeah. But there is a rectangle, for all intents and purposes, about, uh, well, it's a square. It's about four feet by four feet. Um, it's laid into the side of the cliff. And there seems to be some sort of bas relief uh, on it. And the door, if it's a door, it looks like it's made out of solid gold. Hmm. Okay. So I noticed that, but I'm. Right. I'm, yeah, I'm currently like consumed by my husband. Uh, you guys, of course, see that too. You can't not see it. It's right there. I have a great desire to set Dirk's body on fire. I don't know if I should make an idea roll. I don't want, I feel like he's infectious, but I've also gotten a little funny in my head. So I don't know. Well, I can't help you with that. You'll have to discuss that with the grieving widow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Um, you know, Margaret, I'm, I'm sorry that uh, sorry that you've lost Dirk, and I'm. I think I'm sorry that he's brought us here, uh, and I'm afraid that whatever's happened to him is something that could happen to the rest of us. And I don't think we can even carry his body back, so maybe the cleanest thing would be to burn it right here. Don't you think, sis? That would be the best thing. As okay. soon as he says that, I'm going to start nervously picking my nails with my pocket knife, kind of afraid of what she's going to say. She's so I, I, I hear you, but right now, like, I'm, you know, just, and I mean, like, I guess um, the shock of seeing him dead 
um, is still there, but now I'm, I guess I'm starting to notice uh, what what Ellie saw with the, the fungus and everything. Right. Like that. And so I point to that. I'm like, what is this? What the hell is this? And so is it, you say it was like around his mouth and... Right. It's nothing anybody? I've ever seen before. It's nothing I've ever seen before. It's nothing, and it, I don't think it's natural, and I don't think you should touch it, and I don't think we can take him home. Margaret, I'm scared. Bobby, do a spot hidden. No. <laughs> 88. I think I need to change my dice. Your bad dice are ruining my game. <laughs> I, 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 you know, he said he's saying that, and I mean, I haven't really answered, but um, I look around. Um, I'm trying right. to, I'm trying to piece together exactly what happened here. I mean, he came here, and uh, apparently, he came here in search for something that would make him rich. And I look at the, the the gold bob relief thing, and I'm like, "Well, that's a hell of a lot of gold." So, yeah, that I mean, if you could somehow get it off that that wall, Margaret, yeah. do a spot hidden. Are you serious? Nope, 80, 80, 84. I'm gonna go I've get some. <laughs> I, I, I still have I, have, I still have tears in my eyes, so you know. My vision is blurred. Okay. Um, you know what? Uh, I, I'm feeling really uncomfortable because of the conversation. So can I push the roll as I uh, look around for something to occupy my attention? You can just go ahead and roll again. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You, maybe you're looking at the door. <laughs> All right. I'm looking at the door. Oh, it's a 50 out of 45. <laughs> You can use luck roll your luck points if you want. Oh, that's you know what? Yeah, sure. I'll use five luck points. Let's okay. go. <laughs> While they're having their conversation, you you're walking around. You realize that um, the way Dirk had been lying originally, face down, like you know, stretched out, that in the direction of his outstretched hand that was that was there, you see something lying in the mud. And it's also glinting gold. And uh, it's starting to get dark, but you can definitely see there's something gold in the, uh, in the mud uh, that he might have been holding on to, and he let go. Well, I'm looking at the character sheet, and I'm not very smart, so I touch it. Okay. Um, it's small. It's about, you know, like this big. Uh, it's heavy. Uh, obviously, it's made out of solid gold. And uh, it vaguely looks like a key. I'll walk back over to the other two with it. What do you have there? I uh, I just I, uh, I I I found it in uh, in in the mud over there. It's uh, pretty. It's pretty, isn't it? I, I think it's it is old. pretty, and it's very strange. Let's just finish burning this body, and then we can look at it some more. All right. Okay. Well, okay. You, you mentioned that, and and um, I, I kind of, I'm a sensible woman, so. I snap out of out of it. And I look and I, and I see how 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 big is Dirk anyway? Is he a, like a big man or is he kind of like? Yeah, he's a big brawny sailor fellow. So 
Yeah. Um, the other thing I haven't said yet is how are you going to burn it? There's no wood. There's no, there's no dry piece of ground. Right. Fuel. Um, yeah, that's a problem. And it was some ways back to the, to the ship. Yeah, it's a long way. And uh, the only thing I've got on me that's dry is my pipe tobacco, uh, which is not going to be enough to get the lipids and dirk alight. I've got, um, I, I know a, uh, um, I'm going to go over to the door and uh, um, I guess I'll make a strength check because uh, we're tied together. Does that sound good? Um, yeah, it's not that far away from you. Oh, um, so it's, it's within range of movement? Well, we'll say it's just out of range. So you guys all of a sudden start to feel tugging as, uh, as uh, Bobby is trying to get to the golden door. Um, and he's clutching that thing in his hand. I want to get away from Dirk's body, so I don't think I would resist. Yeah, I'll go over there along with him. Okay. As you approach the door, you can see that what's on the door, this bar relief, it's very strange. It almost looks like some sort of tentacled sea beast uh, carved into the door, and there's strange glyphs around it. And when you let up the slack on the rope and Bobby, gets a little closer to it, there's a spot on the door where as you're looking at it, it's almost as if the gold melts and falls into itself and there appears a, a hole just the same shape as the end of the thing that's in his hand. Hmm. Looks like a kitty. Um, well, Bobby has it, so... Um, well, if no one's going to stop me, uh, I'm... I'm kind of mesmerized by this, because this is... Yeah, I'm just going to go... All right. Go. I think I'm... I, I don't think I'm sufficiently mentally competent to make an objection. Okay. I, I put the thing in the hole. Uh, so Bobby puts the, the thing in the hole. And as he does... um the key seems to sort of melt itself to the door and uh, the, the metal of the door begins to melt side to side and it opens almost like a, like a, almost like a flower. It opens up and beyond it is a cave going down into the, the cliff side. Um, there's a, a hollow sort of sound as it does, like the cave is very deep, and there's a, a breeze that comes from deep down inside. Roughly how far above the sea have we gone upward on this island, if maybe, I had any sense? Maybe 100 feet. Um, which is not enough for a cave to be breathing out like that, so it's got to go way down somewhere. Is there any visible gold? <laughs> Other than the door? Other no. than the door that melted away? But, um, Bobby, do a power roll. 34. That's a success. Okay. Bobby, you have a very strong urge to go inside that cave and see what's there, but you're little afraid you're you're resisting the the urge but you really want to there's something in there so what do you guys do you're all standing there with staring at this open mouth you know um we can always come back 
you know, we found a new island. We found a new island. Uh, I'm going to uh, step through. I'm going to step through because I got to figure out what the hell went on with, with Dirk. And I'm kind of curious now, too. So I, I switch on my flashlight and um, I'll take a few steps in. Okay. Afraid or not, I'm not letting Margaret go alone. I'll go in. Okay. Dirk died outside. He didn't die inside. Uh, I, uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stop you. Okay. But please be careful, people. I don't know. We and we have to go back soon. And what is this place about? It's not natural. The cave seems to go in about 20 feet. Um, do a spot hidden. Everyone? Yeah, you might as well do it. I got a one. Just made it. 23. Margaret. So Margaret got a one. Uh, Margaret, as you're, as you're going inside, it suddenly dawns on you something incredibly strange about this tunnel in that the the walls of the tunnel are very smooth and very very clean um it doesn't look like this was constructed it almost looks like it was melted into the rock by something hmm. it's are there- are there any mark? I mean, you said it was smooth, but are there any sort of markings or no markings at all? Absolutely smooth, like a, like a tube or a tunnel that you're in, or like a giant earthworm made it. Does it? Um, the the uh, is it is it a circular? It's tube? circular. Yeah. So it's so the there's no flat bottom. You have no. to sort of right. It's like you're in a sewer. Very. Um, you you move in another twenty feet or so, and you can see that the ground drops away, and you are at the entrance to a very large cavernous area. Uh, and no matter how you shine your your flashlights, you can't really see anything in any direction. Um, Occasionally, you can see glints of your light reflecting off of something way off in the distance. But the ground drops sharply where you are. And it drops off into the darkness. And there's nothing like stalagmites or anything to tie off on. We're just nothing, in a tube. Nothing like that, no. Yeah, I'm, I, I, uh, it's time to start screaming and trying to claw my way back out toward uh, the fog. Okay, did you say screaming? Yeah. Okay. So you, what are you screaming? Margaret, Bob. Margaret, Bob! We can't die here like this! Do a luck roll, everybody. Oh, boy. (laughs) Sorry, people. Nope. 75. Oh, wait. No. No. Hang on. Uh, Math. Ooh! Eight. I'm very lucky. Uh, uh, Sixty-five divided by nine equals seven point. Or wait, no. Divided by five for extreme, right? Which is thirteen. So I got an extreme success. Okay. Um. Uh. Bobby, you see, you know, Doctor Ellis screaming at you. Um. It's kind of unnerved you. Uh. You're kind of with him. You want to. You want to leave with him. Uh. Margaret, you're you're kind of facing, looking into the cavern as they're screaming and mm-hmm. you failed your luck roll. Yeah. Um, something moves in the cave, something monstrously huge. Um, 
you can see the glinting of the, the moisture on it as it moves. And you realize that there's something in front of you that must be one or 200 feet long and worm-like. Uh, you think you're seeing something writhing in the darkness down below. I think you're right, guys. Sunny, you're right. <laughs> little sanity roll for you, Margaret. It's time to go. No, I got an 89. Okay. You can do a 1d6. Oh, boy. Now, you know I was at four. So, let me see. Let me break out the d6. Oh, here we go. I got two. Okay. Um, well, Margaret screams at least. Okay. And as she does, and you guys are ready to go, and you turn back, and you all shine your flashlights in that direction, you suddenly see multiple tentacles reaching up out of the darkness and moving very quickly towards the tunnel that you have, that you're standing in. So you guys can do sanity rolls too, but you can also <laughs> run. Yeah. I'll go for that running play. I got, I made my sanity. So did I. And I'm running, uh, let's see, my, my dex is only 40. Oh, do we need to roll a dex roll for the, for the running? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was there, what, what did we get for success on that sandy roll? Still one point? Oh, 1d4. 1d4, yeah. That's, and that's I, a hard. Oh, so I roll a I, four, okay. <laughs> I only got a one that time, but I really filled my dex roll. 93. Okay. All right. Um, oh, shit. We're tied together, yo. Yeah, we're tied together. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was an awesome idea. <laughs> well, as I said, nothing could go wrong. Uh, uh, Dr. Ellis, you start scrambling up the way first, and you immediately lose your footing on the slippery surface. Uh, yeah. um, Bob, you leap over him. Uh, and you're probably like, you know, I roll it straight. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> uh, but you reach the end of your rope, Margaret. You're climbing over, uh, Dr. Ellis, and uh, you I'm gonna help him up, though. I mean, like, like if he slipped and I'm like literally climbing over, I'm not gonna say, fuck you, I'm out of here, right? right. Gonna, Brother, yeah, I'm gonna hold out my hand from the grabs and try to right. do like, you know, Since run. You since you do that, go ahead and do a luck roll. Oh, no. <laughs> this is how we get eaten, y'all. Can I spend luck points on luck rolls? <laughs> no. Oh, my God. Margaret! Margaret! So I got a 95, and I pushed. On a luck roll? No, not really. No, no, pushing, no pushing on a luck roll? Okay. Uh, but I got a 95. All right, you try to help him, and you go down. And as you do, this tentacle has now caught up with you, and for a few moments it looms over you, um, and uh, and then it attempts to grab you. So we'll do a, a dodge. Or a gray. Yeah, you can do a dodge, and I'll do a. Can I charge it with my pocket knife? No, you were actually <laughs> farthest away from it. Oh damn! Okay, but still tied to us. I got a 22. And I got a double zero, so you are really uh, lucky. Rock it ball. Uh, it uh. seems to be trying to grab a hold of you, and it's fumbling around. Mm -hmm. So you manage to, to pull yourselves away from it. Um, you continue to, I, I assume you get back on your feet, and you get, the, uh, you get back up the tunnel and to the entrance. Uh, the gold is still open. Um, yeah, because that would that would really suck if by the time we get up there, the door closes. Well, the thing is, is that when you step out of the tunnel, well, you're not stepping, you're running out of the tunnel, it's pitch black outside. So the sun's gone down, the, the fog is still there, uh, there's no light from the stars or the moon or anything like that. It's it's pitch black. We still um, have our flashlights. Here's a question. Did we drop our, because we had our flashlights in there, did we drop them? I don't think so. I think anything in your hands, you just grab 
10 times okay. tighter than you had before. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you can hear a rumbling sound coming from behind you, and the air is definitely rushing out that hole that you've just left. Um, what do you do? <laughs> I'll run in, we're running, well, I'm going to be running in the same direction um, that we came from. So okay. in that general direction. So you have to jump over Dirk's body, and uh, you're running in that general direction. Um, all three of you do me a spot hidden roll. Oh, no. Bring it back. Uh, nope. eight, 98. Four, uh, hard success. Okay. So the two of you failed, but Bobby, you saw. Um, the two of you are scared to death. You're scrambling over the rocks. You're heading towards the coast. Bobby, you're doing the same thing. But if Bobby, as you look up, you realize there are two large globule-looking things. They're almost black, but there seem to be luminescent globes inside them. They almost look like amoebas or slugs, giant slug things. Uh, each one is about the size of, well, let's say, uh, like about the size of a cow. And they're moving up and over the rocks, and they're heading towards where you guys are heading. They're heading towards you, trying to cut you off from the coast. You guys don't notice it because you're too scared, but uh, Bobby sees them. Shit, 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 we need to go faster! Okay. Um, I, I yeah, know. I think I'm probably at full speed that I've got, given that I'm also tethered to people. And you're also trying to scramble over rocks and things like that. All right. Um, and heading downhill in the, you know, most general sense. Right. I'm going to have um, my pocket knife ready because, I mean, I'm going to stab something before it kills me. <laughs> if, if any of you look back at the cliff side, you can now see that there is something coming out of the tunnel. Uh, tentacles of some sort. Um, as you probably all know, octopuses can squeeze themselves through very small holes. And whatever this is that was inside is trying to squeeze itself out. Uh, Margaret, fuck your stupid husband and his drunken greed! <laughs> Margaret! Margaret! I'm, I'm totally ignoring. I, I don't even hear him. I'm... Uh, rushing you know rushing uh, out um did we did we um because i know that um yeah bobby seen these these creatures but did we happen to see them now you you haven't seen them yet but if if bobby starts screaming and pointing you guys see these things okay they're like large luminescent slugs that are heading. and the and the rumbling you mentioned earlier is probably Palpable. The, thing, the thing behind you, yeah, you can hear it. Yeah. The, almost yeah. a booming sound. Right. And maybe the the rock is shaking too, given the vastness yeah. of things. So, so yeah. I'm going to let you do two rolls, a luck roll and a dexterity roll, to see if you can get down back down to the coast. Uh, like Here's a my luck roll? roll? Or two separate rolls. Like two separate rolls. I passed my luck roll, 41 out of 60. Ooh, that's our right. luck. I got an extreme dexterity check. Okay. And I got an extreme dexterity check. I got a three out of 70. And I got a, uh, uh, is that hard? No, that's normal. And a normal luck check. Okay. I got, yeah, an extreme luck and a, a hard dex. Wow. So our lucky crew. I guess fear and adrenaline has just reached into you and filled you with it. You're practically dancing along the top of the rocks, <laughs> getting down there, bouncing. Uh, these two slug things um, uh, have not cut you off, but they are coming up now behind you as you're running. And just as you start to get back down to the the flat, slippery, muddy area, uh, and you look out uh, into the water, you can see the Henrietta sitting there, and you see a, 
you see uh, Doogie up on the, the wheelhouse, and he sees you. He's got a light shining in your direction. Uh, do a, Doogie. Do a spot Doogie. hit. Two out of 60, so that's an extreme. 71. One out of 100. Wow. Dr. Ellis and Margaret, as, as you're standing there, you guys are all waving for Doogie. Uh, Dr. Ellis and Margaret, you can see that there's something in the water near the boat, uh, luminescent and swimming around the bottom of the Henrietta. I'll scream, Doogie, watch out. There's something in the water. And as you do, you can see the boat rocks to the sides. And uh, Doogie grabs a hold, trying not to fall off. Um, the Henrietta begins to pull away from the side, of the, um, the side of the island, but not under its own power. It's moving sideways. Oh, no. And you can see it rocking really strong to the side as, uh, as it starts to capsize. Doogie is thrown into the water and you don't see what happens to him. And uh, you can see flashes of, of light as the, the ship is being torn apart in the waves. And as you turn around to, to look back at the island, these two luminescent slug things come up and over the rocks. And that's the last thing that you ever see. <laughs> And that's the end of our story. <laughs> I'm going to try to stab one. Okay, you start poking at it. I got a 94. <laughs> Jeez. So you poke at it, and your hand goes in, and your hand does not come back out again. It's just dissolved by whatever. It is. Well, I, I did indeed stab it, though, is what you're telling me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. It's worth something in Valhalla. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Macintosh, I'm, that's kind of northern. I'm not really sure if uh, if you need much of an explanation. Um, <laughs> Doogie managed to find Dirk. a recently Dirk. risen chunk of something from underwater. And the thing that was imprisoned inside of it was uh, like a spawn of Cthulhu. Mm. And uh, the key itself had a kind of magic, if you will, or intelligence to it that w compelled uh, Bobby to open up the door. If you guys had tried to struggle with him, he would have fought you to try to open up the door. Mm -hmm. um, Dirk had found the island, uh, and he had found the key. It's likely he found it the day before, and then thought, you know, I got the coordinates, I'm going to go back to the island and, you know, get some of this gold and bring it back and we'll be rich and all of that. But the creatures stopped him. They, uh, they killed him before he ever could get off the, the island. And uh, they wrecked the, the Margaret and uh, broke the anchor and pushed the thing away from their island. And that's what you found. You found it just drifting. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Now, in the, in, the, in the actual original story, it says that it's a chunk of relier. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, but, that's uh, the strange geometries. But I would say that it's got to be something a little more than that because relier is nowhere near this part of the Pacific. So I would say maybe it was, you know, <laughs> there's relier, maybe there's other little bits and islands of the, the Cthulians when they ruled the world. Uh, anyways, this sense. is this is one of them, and it's it wasn't a shoggoth; it was a slime, uh, hmm. some sort oh, of a yeah. slime I think creature, it's like an abolith or something like that. Something like that, yeah. Okay, yeah, perfect tunnels. All right, our players included Wayne Worthy, David Gassaway, Joseph Moltari, and uh, we had Kim Kier here earlier. Unfortunately, his computer kind of crashed and. Uh, and myself, of course, is the Keeper of the Secrets. We're currently producing four shows a week with music and sound effects added in post-production in order to create a richer listener experience. 
We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. If you'd like to become a patron of our show, visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar or two a month helps a lot. Like, share, and subscribe to our, our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And be sure to leave us some comments we like reading. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.